Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of MrKent.com. And uh, this is a Saturday a couple of days ago, and my son uh, worked all day on just the uh, things that needed to get caught up on, I guess. This trailer, this big trailer, belongs to a very good friend of his, <clears throat> and he just got it. It's used, but it didn't have everything on it that he wanted. So down here you see my son, uh, they, they uh, are using a, 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 like a storage uh, box out of the back of a picks up, pickup truck and uh, fasten it to the, to the uh, underneath the bed of the trailer in order to uh, store tools and everything that they need. <clears throat> so that's what he's working on. And uh, he, when he does a job, he does it very thoroughly, <laughs> uh, more than, than I would, I'm sure. Anyway, so I thought, well, I get some shots of that. And then it is, it's not the most exciting thing, but I thought, well, I'll tell you a, another Christmas story of, uh, uh, in the days of my life. And so, um, I'll do that and then we can watch him work. <laughs> uh, in a previous video, two or three videos back, I, uh, uh, said I'd be telling more stories about that big house that we lived in in uh, downtown, well, in central, the central area, I guess you call it. Anyway, about a 20-minute walk from the middle of downtown Seattle. And uh, so, um, and the house isn't there anymore. I don't know if it burned down or what. So this is an older picture of it. But uh, anyway, it was like, it was almost, you could call it a mansion. It had been uh, lived in by the governor of Washington at one time. So, uh Anyway, I had a lot of fun in, in living in that house. But one of the things that we, uh, us guys did is down, uh, downtown in the Bon Marche, there was a hobby shop on the sixth floor. And so, uh, and that was the only hobby shop we knew of. <laughs> but it was really, it was a good, good place to go because they had all kinds of balsa wood and, uh, models you could build, you know, plastic models and, and, uh, so, oh, by the way, you'll notice it says high tensile on the side of that trailer. And you'll notice that he's drilling and drilling and drilling and not making a whole lot of progress. <clears throat> and eventually, he had to resharpen that drill. Uh, he's got a drill doctor tool and he resharpened it <clears throat> and then turned, uh, changed to another drill because uh, that, that trailer is made out of some really hard steel. Well, anyway, so uh, we went down there, and uh, we used to, I mean, <laughs> you know, we didn't have a whole lot to do, and so, and it was on the sixth floor, and so uh, one time we decided, uh, we when we were up there, we thought we'd uh, go down on the staircase, and so uh, we we found the stairs, and, and then you could, it was, the staircase was, uh, it was like a... <laughs> It was like a, a, a tall, tall stack. And the stairs wound around the outside edge of it. And you could look down over the banister and see clear to the basement. But when we got, uh, when we came through that door, we noticed there was a staircase going up to the seventh floor, which wasn't for the public. And they had put, they had built this wooden fence, uh, in the stair, uh, you know, on the staircase headed up to the seventh floor. <clears throat> so to keep people from going in there, had a little gate on it, and it was padlocked. But uh, they had made it so that people couldn't, you know, go around the edge of it, and they hung it out over the edge, maybe a foot and a half or so. And, uh, you know, it was all made out of two-by-fours and, and wood. So uh, we looked at that, and we decided, hmm, well, I think, and I thought I, you know, I was pretty sure I could grab a hold of the of the of the pickets or whatever you want to call them. Anyway, the the pieces of the fence <clears throat> and shinny around the edge of it and go on and get on the other side of it. Of course, there goes my son waving at us. Of course, uh, if you fell, you'd fall clear to the basement. <laughs> but anyway, back then I was young and foolish, and now I'm old. And uh, uh, anyway, so uh, so. You know, I shinnied around it, and then my buddy, uh, I don't know if I was with one guy or two guys, but anyway, there was more than one of us, and shinnied around, and then we went on up the, the staircase. It circled around uh, in in that tall uh, area there, 
and then we got to the door to the to the roof, and um, well, we he hit we hit the uh, at the seventh floor. The the staircase went up one more place to the roof, so we got up to the roof and um, uh, <laughs> opened the door, and sure enough, you got up. You were on the roof. Now, back in those days, at Christmas time, I think they hung a Christmas tree over the edge of the Bon Marche, but I don't think, uh, I, ha- I can't find any pictures of it. This was back in the mid-50s, okay? So uh, I don't have any pictures of it that I can find, but eventually I think they they made it, found it was easier to just hang that star over and because the, the Christmas tree had a big star at the top of it. Well, so what they did was whenever it was we went up there, it wasn't Christmas time yet, we went up there, and here was that whole great big bunch of lights all hooked together into the shape of a Christmas tree laying on the roof ready to be hung over the side. And so uh, you, you know what he's asking me? He's asking me if I'm running out of material to put on my YouTube channel. <laughs> And so, well, you know, this isn't because I'm running out of material. It's because I like to fly my drone. But uh, so anyway, uh, there was all these, you know, hundreds of light bulbs. And, of course, uh, we didn't do anything with them. Um, I'm not going to confess anything. But it sure was a temptation to throw them over the side of the, (laughs) throw one of them over the side of the, uh, and then listen for it to pop over the side of the building. So anyway, um uh, so we came back down and uh, uh, shinnied around the fence, and we made it okay. <laughs> so everything was all right. And then uh, at uh, at Christmas time, when I was old enough that I was in junior high and I had a paper route, uh, they set up a little savings account for me. And and at Christmas time, then I had money to spend on on family. And now we had my mom and dad, us four kids my Aunt Janice and my Aunt Chloe and my grandma and grandpa living with us in that great big house. And so uh, when it came to buy Christmas gifts for Christmas morning, I had to buy nine different gifts. And back then, I just I took out about $100 from my savings account, and I'd, I'd spend about $10 on every person in the, uh, in the family. So, <clears throat> and back in the mid-50s, $10 bought a pretty nice gift. And so I did that uh, as long as I had my paper route, which was, I don't know, two or three years. And uh, so the Bon Marche was in the like the center of Seattle there. And then um, around it, there were other nice stores. Uh, I remember Woolworth. Uh, I think I've told stories about going to Woolworth when I was down there and buying a, a soda. But uh, I won't go there. But anyway, I used to go into Woolworth because it was a nice department store. And then also there was this real fancy uh, jewelry store called Wisefields. I don't know if it's still there. Now, the reason I'm zooming in here is because that's my son's business that he's got, Gunny Built. <clears throat> and uh, if you live in the uh, in the Phoenix area, especially South Phoenix, and you need some work done on your vehicle, uh, he's the guy to call because his rates are very fair and uh, he's very thorough and uh, so and you know he's he's got a, a degree from uh, uh, diesel uh, heavy equipment school so he's pretty good at working on that on diesels in fact he drives a diesel so anyway so that one year then what I did uh, one year I went into Wisefields and for thirty two dollars they had a uh, it was called an eight day clock as a wind up clock. And this is not a picture of that clock, but it's one like it. Anyway, uh, so I really didn't want to spend $30 on my mom, so I decided I'd give it to my mom and my Aunt Chloe. And then my older sister said, you don't want to do that. Find something else for your Aunt Chloe and give that give that clock to your mom. And uh, so I, I found something else to buy for my Aunt Chloe, and I gave that $32 clock to to my mom for Christmas. Well, <laughs> that was sitting on the mantle or on a on a shelf somewhere all the rest of the days that I lived with my mom and dad. And uh, so, and then I uh, it, when it, when uh, my mom died, well then uh, my sister who had talked me into buying it for my mom, she got it. <laughs> and so I wasn't able to to keep it or anything, but that's all right. 
Uh, but uh, now he's winding up here, and he asked me if I wanted to finish, and I said, yep. And so uh, this is, he's all done with it, and uh, I, I, there you go. So anyway, uh, that's the story of my Christmases, and I want to thank you for watching my videos and watching my son work, and, and God bless. Thank you.